Hi everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Sitting next to me today is the 2020 Jeep Wrangler, but this Wrangler has something special under the hood, the Eco Diesel engine. North Americans have been pleading with Jeep for years to get a diesel in the Wrangler and it's finally here. And you know what? Diesel and towing always work well together, so this Wrangler should be a better towing rig than it was before. But you know what? We won't know until we put it to the test. So in this video, we're going to hook up our 18-foot pontoon boat behind this Jeep to see how it handles that load. And then, of course, we're going to go off-road. Now, this is not a Rubicon, so we're not going crazy. But hey, it's a Jeep. That means it has to handle decent once the pavement ends. And we're going to find out if it does. We're starting this one with the walk around, which means we have to look at the power plant. So that is a three liter V6 diesel that makes 260 horsepower and 442 pound feet of torque. And yes, this engine actually makes a little bit less torque than it does over there in the Ram 1500. Now the transmission here is an eight speed automatic and that's the only transmission you can get if you go for this eco diesel. Now, Still a unique thing, you gotta point it out. The hood on a Jeep still has these latches right up here on the hood. That's pretty cool, it's a little kind of manual feature, right? Let me interrupt myself real quick. Yes, YouTube, that is a big hole in my shirt. I can't even afford new shirts anymore. So please go below right now and hit the join button to become a member of the Truck King YouTube channel. If you can chip us a couple of bucks, it goes a long way in helping to make these videos better and better all the time and to make sure I get some new shirts. So our Wrangler today is the Sahara. This is definitely the sort of more luxurious model, not the model that's meant to go off-road. And you can tell, first of all, you get sort of this bright work here on the grill and on the bumper. Uh, you know, it looks a little bit more upscale compared to the Rubicon. Now moving back, we do get a set of Goodyear Wranglers with Kevlar protection. Not a super aggressive set of all-terrain tires, but a uh, little bit better than what you'd normally get on most Wranglers. I appreciate that. Now, like I said, it's a Sahara, so we do have side steps here. I wouldn't get those on my Jeep, but it's nice to have it for shorter people climbing up into this Jeep. Coming around the back, I want to point out the spare tire. Now, of course, Wranglers have had a spare on the back forever, but what it does do, it kind of gets in the way of the hitch down here. Now, it depends what kind of trailer you have. For most trailers, you'll be okay, but there are some that have, you know, different boxes and different things right up here in the nose, and this spare might kind of get in the way. So it just is something to keep in mind if you're going to be towing with your Wrangler, which we're about to do. So let's go out there and uh, hook up our pontoon boat. Okay, time to back into our trailer here. So there's the camera here on the Jeep. You only get the single view, no zoom in mode. Although it is nice that you have the line there in the middle for your hitch ball for when you're hooking up. Um, the implementation of the camera is cool. You can see it here. They actually had to fit the camera into the middle of the spare tire. And before 2019, there was no camera on the Wrangler. So it was nice that they put it there. Although, yes, it was government mandated, so they kind of had to, but still, nice to have the backup on your Wrangler so you can hook up, boom, trailers, just like that. Let's look over the build sheet now together. So this is the Wrangler Unlimited Sahara with a base price here in Canada of $48.95. Now here are all these standard features. Standard engine on this Jeep is the 3.6 liter V6. Like usual, we have quite a few options, but the one I want to skip to in this video is right there. That three liter diesel, $7,300, and you have to get the eight speed for $1,700, bringing your total price in Canada to $9,000 for the diesel. Now in the United States, it's not much better. Going for the Eco Diesel and the Wrangler brings the price up by $6,000. And now you can see our total price here in Canada is $72,385, and I'll throw the US price up right now. It's important to know the payload on any tow vehicle, so let's take a look at that before we take off. It's right here on the door jam sticker, 850 pounds of payload here in the Wrangler. 
Now we can do some quick math. Well, max tow rating here is 3,500 pounds. So if you have a 3,500 pound trailer, that's 350 pounds of tongue weight, subtract that from the payload, that leaves you with 500 pounds for passengers and cargo. So just from a numbers standpoint, uh, the Jeep does not make a great tow vehicle, but we really gotta go see how it feels in the real world. Now we're on the road here in the Wrangler. We've got the pontoon on back there. Um, that boat dry weight comes in at 1495. Uh, we've got you know a bit of fluids in it plus the trailer. We're probably around 2,000 pounds, maybe even a little less. So a pontoon boat certainly isn't a heavy load. Although something we talk about a lot is not all loads are created equal. And even though that bo boat is light, it's still a big sail, a big aerodynamic drag behind the Jeep. So uh, you know it'll still give us a really good sense for how this thing tows. Uh, now we are in the Unlimited, the four-door model. If you want to tow, you should get a four-door because the longer wheel base feels a lot better. Um, and the tow rating on this Jeep is 3,500 pounds, so the rating is still quite low. But you know what, rating aside, now we have the diesel. And we didn't have the diesel before. You, you could only tow 3,500, but with that gas engine. So uh, yeah, now it all comes down to what it feels like. So Dad, you're driving. What do you think so far of the diesel? Like any diesel, torque's available right down low. And that's normally where you want it. Um, gas motors make it up high you got to spin that engine yeah so particularly picking around stop start uphills downhills we're not talking about freeway speeds um, I love the feeling of the diesel it pulls solid and there's really nothing more to say uh, the only other thing I got to put in is uh, the cost of this is I'm actually a little surprised at how expensive this particular option is and unless you're going to do a lot of miles, I don't see the point. Yeah, it's really expensive, right? Nine thousand bucks here in Canada, six grand uh, in the states. It's a lot of money just going for the diesel. Now, I think what, to your point, it always comes down to will it pay itself off? Well, going for the diesel, you're getting a two mile per gallon uh, advantage over the two liter turbo. So all of that money is only getting you two mpg. So it's gonna come down to fuel economy. And actually, you know what? We had a chance to take this Jeep on a long range road trip to really get a sense for the fuel economy. So why don't we take a look at the result of that right here. All right, folks, we're here on the uh, 401 on a not so lovely day. We're heading east and uh, we're gonna reset the fuel economy right now. Right now? Yeah, right now, we're ready. Bingo! Boom. All right, and uh, we'll report back at the end of this road trip how she does. How's it feeling, Dad? It's a Jeep. It's squirrely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little loud on a rainy day in here, too. <laughs> okay, folks, we made it here to our destination to lovely Prince Edward County, Ontario. And we were here for the Ram TRX launch. So we just drove some Rams really fast and jumped them. And now we're heading back to Toronto, back to the city. So we'll get the rest of our fuel economy. But here's the update. So far, we're getting eight and a half liters per hundred. Pretty dang decent for this diesel. Mostly highway miles. And now we're on our way home and uh, we'll update you at the end of the trip to let you know how the fuel economy was. And you should mention there's three of us in here and a pile of gear. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, let's go. All right, just pulling into our destination here and we can do our fuel economy. So there it is, 8.7 liters per 100 or 468 kilometers. I don't know, I'm pretty impressed with this diesel. All-terrain tires, dad was going pretty quick. How quick were you going, dad? I'm going to say we were averaging 115. All right, sounds about right. So yeah, you know what? I think that's going to be the big sell for this diesel. If you do a lot of miles in your Wrangler, you probably want to go diesel. Another thing we got to bring up, see what you think about this, Dad. The one-touch open sky roof. <laughs> it's going to mess up my hair. <laughs> so the cool thing about this roof is, I mean, we're cruising at 80K, and you can just open it up, right? There's no stopping involved, no you know, big uh, hooks or anything. You just crank it open and boom, you now have an open air experience here in your Jeep. Uh, this is a $3,000 option, so you're paying for this convenience, 
but I don't know, I kind of like it. I think it's just so easy. Hit a button, close it up, hit a button to open it up. I dig it. Yeah, wow, that's really cool closing up at, at such a high speed. Yeah. Okay, everybody, now it's time to do the boat ramp test. And I mean, we know it's gonna pull the boat up here, but our launch here is getting pretty rough these days. Really rut it out. This is like the perfect situation for a Wrangler diesel towing a pontoon boat because it's a little bit of a combination of off-road and hard work. Okay, we're ready. We're picking through here at uh, about two kilometers an hour because I don't want to bottom anything out, not the Jeep, but my trailer and my boat. So, you know what? I'm just barely touching this throttle and this is what I like about diesel. Um, I'm sitting at 1100 RPM and it's just pulling up the hill and this is this is a fairly steep steep grade not to mention the banging around so you know for this sort of thing it's awesome it's it's really nice so feel how nice and steady that was nothing to it so score one for the diesel on the highway with the boat behind us now um, this is really the good test we're getting up now 88 90 kilometers an hour we're about to hit 100 so this is real highway speed um, so far I mean you can feel the boat back there and that's the thing with Wranglers you know they have soft suspension kind of soft steering and from what I'm feeling over here it's a little wishy-washy a little marshmallowy certainly not that confidence inspiring sort of stiffness you like um, is that kind of what you're getting to? Yeah, because I'm looking in the rear view mirror and I got quite a tail wag going on here. Uh, you know what, the boat's really tall. So you got all that wind going right over the top of the Jeep and smacking into the cover on the sail on the uh, pontoon boat. So this, in this particular case, it's not about the weight, it's about this surface area. Totally. And I mean, it's okay, but particularly through this first curve here, um, the back end is like diving a little bit and as soon as that happened then it, the, the trailer just starts wagging mm. so I'm not real happy about that but then if anybody thinks a Jeep is a great tow vehicle get your head examined I mean yeah it's, it never has been no it, it'll it'll do for certain things but uh, and it's like this I'm gonna pull my boat out once put it in once fine but if I was towing this every weekend I'd rethink what kind of vehicle I was towing with. Absolutely, and just from what I'm seeing here, and this is the story with Wranglers in general, it takes a lot of driving. Like, you're on the wheel, you're moving, you're paying attention, and that's what a driving a Wrangler is, even just without a trailer. Um, they're not known to be the kind of vehicles that just track straight and eat up the miles. Um, so, of course, maybe we're getting to the big butt now, and in my opinion, the big butt, of course, is going off-road. You're gonna have to live with these compromises. It's not gonna be the best tow vehicle, it's not the best on-road, but going off-road is where this Wrangler will shine. Even the Sahara, this isn't even the Rubicon, but even this Sahara is way better than most vehicles off-road. So, uh, yeah, don't buy it to tow, but why don't we take it on the trail now and you can see it in its natural element. All right, folks, now we are here in the home of the Wrangler, off-road. We're out here, we're gonna tackle our new off-road trail, the left hook, and boy, it's been raining up here, so it is pretty muddy. Now, I mentioned a couple times now, this is the Wrangler Sahara. Uh, the Sahara is all about looking nice and having upgraded interior features and leather seats. It's not about going off-road. But the funny thing with the Wrangler is, it doesn't matter which Wrangler you buy, every single one is pretty good at going off-road just based on the numbers. Even here in the Sahara, we still have 10 inches of ground clearance. We still have an approach angle over 40 degrees because of just how you know much clearance the tires have up there so yes even in the non off-road Wranglers off-roading uh, is still one of the priorities there's no doubt about that and uh, so far so good I'm just about to hit the left hook right here and we'll see how she does
Okay, folks, just hitting the trail. So I'm putting the Jeep down into four-wheel drive low. I really want to feel what the low range ratio feels like with all the torque from this diesel. And that's all you can set up here. There's no locking differentials here. Um, when you get the diesel, the rear end ratio is 373, and you get a limited slip in the back. So I do have the limited slip, but no lockers. So the only thing I can actually control up here button-wise is putting in four low, and that's it. Besides that, uh, we're good to go. Now, I do have a manual setting here so I can lock it right into first gear or second gear whatever you want I got her locked in first right now and let's see if we sh she she won't just crawl through it's muddy over here folks <laughs> it's muddy and I'm spinning tires slowly but surely she's climbing but boy it's muddy I don't know if this is gonna work so Goodyear Wranglers with Kevlar protection, not a particularly aggressive off-road tire, and you're seeing it right here. Just this little bit of mud, it just can't grab traction. There we go. Okay, okay. I'm definitely going to have to hit the open mud sections with a little bit more momentum if I want to make it through, but okay, we made it there. This is not the most aggressive set of tires. However, I have to say, once again, because it's a Wrangler, there's just no worry about, you know, rubbing underneath. There's no worry about brake over angle. Uh, I know my bumper is going to clear all the rocks out here. So in terms of the clearances, it's unbelievable. But yes, here on the Sahara, uh, even with these tires, which are actually kind of a step above the Bridgestone duelers that I've seen on most Sahara models, yeah, yeah they're just not that aggressive. But so far, so good. We'll keep picking our way along just feeling these tires in the beginning I'm nervous and this is a Sahara it's not the off-road Jeep so I'm not pushing it like I would push a Rubicon um, they're oh yeah these tires suck in the mud I'm getting the littlest bit of power and it's sliding it's sliding right now and I'm just creeping okay now comes the biggest hole here and let's see if if it would oh no it's sinking it's spinning I'm stuck I'm stuck I'm stuck and I'm barely in it nope we're done I'm not going into that mud hole sorry YouTube I've gone into a lot of mud holes with a lot of vehicles and I'm not doing this one because I know I'm not gonna make it out it's barely making it out of here in reverse and I'm barely in the first mud hole all right everybody what we have learned today is Goodyear Wranglers with Kevlar protection horrible mud tires absolutely not a mud tire whatsoever i can't believe i'm stuck right here like it doesn't even feel like i'm stuck on anything but it's enough come on diesel come on diesel <laughs> there we go okay i got her i got her and the power feels great it's almost like an issue there's so much low end torque that uh, it's just spinning the wheels right away because it's so slick it's just clay and it's just snotty out here oh my goodness well, we'll get her out of here, though. Well, everybody, that is it for this video. Obviously, this Jeep Wrangler Sahara is not the most ideal tow vehicle, so if towing is your number one priority, don't get a Wrangler. But if you want something that's pretty dang good off-road and can tow in a pinch, this is the vehicle for you. So that's it for this one. Like I said, go below right now. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think of this Jeep Wrangler. As always, don't forget to hit like and hit subscribe and then come right back to the channel to see what we are testing next. See ya.